Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Just before we sit, I want to draw your attention to First Chronicles chapter 4. Verses 9 and 10. The New Living Translation has it this way. There was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. He was the one who prayed to the God of Israel. Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And it concludes by saying, and God granted him his request. You may sit. Some years ago, all we were hearing about was the prayer of Jabez. On the lips of almost every individual you were hearing these words. Books were sold. There were t-shirts, ornaments, and a number of other things that were pushing this prayer. So you would have had pieces like these. Uh, unfortunately, I can't give this to you. This is a gift. So I cherish this. But all these things you had. So everywhere you went, you were hearing people saying, oh, the prayer of Jabez. Um, and a number of persons were using it. Like most things, it would seem as though that this prayer that was so popular died either a sudden death or a natural death. The question is, did it really die? I want to answer that question and say unapologetically that that prayer did not die. But I believe the drive that it had before somehow has waned. I believe with all my heart that this is an ideal time to draw our attention to this prayer found in the text that was read earlier from the book of Chronicles, chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. First Chronicles. The book of Chronicles really was written to inspire hope. And I can say to you, that in this time that we are in, what we need as a people is hope. And may I say to you that hope is not in your bank account. May I say to you, hope is not necessarily in the place that you live, but hope is found only in Jesus Christ. Whether you want to ac accept it or not, it's a fact. And the thing is, the people, um, as we all know, God's people had been exiled. And that exile had robbed the people of their, the people of Israel of their wealth. And their return to the land created resentment among 
their neighbors. And that, 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 I mean, that is so common. And let me explain what I mean by that. Um, when persons who would have left Barbados and Sister Joan and others might be able to identify, when they return to the land of their birth, persons want to know what is wrong with them. Am I right or am I right? Persons want to know what has happened to them, etc. So that was a challenge that the people of that day were experiencing as the chronicler took some time to pen some beautiful words and he would have sought his task really was to establish and validate the people's link with the past. So, the early chapters of First Chronicles deals with a lot of genealogies. This body begat this body and the next body and so on. And unless you are a person that has a passion for, for tracing the family tree, etc., it would be easy, very easy to simply forget reading First Chronicles. It would, it would be so easy our seniors, they specialize in genealogies. Have you ever heard them at a funeral or at a wedding or some event that brings family together? Let me tell you, your, 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 your mother would say, um, but you see that person there? That person is your grandfather's uncle, sister, brother. And let me tell you, all you can do is just listen or sometimes you get lost when they start to tell you about and this body. And yes, they used to live in St. John and then they moved to Carrington Village and so on and so forth. You know what I'm talking about. But then, with all the genealogies and so on that would cause a person not to read it because not only do we have the genealogies, but you have some names that, that when you get them, you just say, and he be yeah. Because you have a little challenge trying to call the name. But in the midst of all that genealogy, etc., we have an interruption. A marked interruption that simply says, there was a man named Jabez. He was more honorable than his brothers. No mention is made of the brothers. No mention is made of the father. No mention is made of any other person beside the fact that his mother conceived him in pain. Hence, the name Jabez. You see, every parent in that day, whenever they named a child, there was something that was tied to the name. So they tell me that the Chinese, when they're naming a child and they drop something here, ping, pong, pong, that's the name. I, I don't know. But, but, but the parents of that day would always link some experience to giving the child or children their names. If you don't me, check scripture and peruse it. So, there's no mention of any of this guy's relatives, Jabez, none whatsoever. Suffice to say that he was more honorable than all his brothers. Something would have prompted the writer of Chronicles, to pull this young man out and place it right there. In this prayer, my friends, there are four things that I want to draw to your attention. The first one, as Jabez prayed, he said, Oh, that you would bless me. And they tell me, that the Hebrew word for bless means to bestow favor or kindness. And all that Jabez was saying, God, I want you to show favor or kindness to me. 
Listen. When you trace Old Testament, you would recognize how significant it was when blessings were bestowed on children. Matter of fact, we know about Jacob and Esau. He sold his birthright. Isaac came and did a similar thing, not in terms of selling his birthright, but, but when he wanted something to eat, and his wife overheard the conversation. You know the story. And boy, Jacob was able to disguise so that by the time he saw it turn up, Father done at food and done bless Jacob. So there was significance that was attached to the blessing of, of a child or the blessing of children back in that day. So Jabez was saying, God, I want you to grant me kindness, your kindness and favor to me. Let me say to you that in this time that we are in, we need all the favor and all the kindness that Almighty God can show to us. The second thing that is found in that prayer is that you would expand or enlarge my territory. Now, when you think about expanding or enlarging territory, you need to understand that in that day, they had boundary lines just like today. We need to understand that in that day, Land was given to persons, etc. Matter of fact, the people of God were told that this is the land that you are to possess. But they had to fight. They had to get some persons out, etc. But Jabez's prayer was, God, I want you to enlarge my territory. Listen to me. I don't, I don't know if we really understand that. But let me help you to understand in a practical way. Sister Judith has something called flower dough. Because I thought it was flower dough. But I was corrected and, and I was told it is flower dough. So you can get certain things from her that you would be able to use, etc. I am talking about enlarging territory. A couple of weeks ago, I saw something that said the opening of Sally's. I am talking about enlarging territory. I also would have seen something that said Music by DJ Saltbread. You all know DJ Saltbread? Let me see the hands of all those who know DJ Saltbread. DJ Saltbread stand. <laughs> that is DJ Saltbread. Brother Dario. I don't know, but... It would seem as though that DJ salt bread is hot out of the oven. And I am happy because we are talking about enlarge my territory. And I'm saying to us that when we want some music to come down, who you going to call? DJ salt bread. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. And I'm saying those are the ones that I know of. But what about the other persons who are doing stuff? And God is enlarging their territory. Boy, that's the second thing in that prayer. The third thing that we see coming out in that prayer is that you would keep me from all trouble and prayer. 
and pain, sorry. Keep me from all trouble and pain. Now, they tell me that the original name of Jabez means he grieves. He will cause pain. So there's a view that what pretty much Jabez was saying, God, I don't want you to allow me to cause any pain. And in addition to that, I want you to keep me from trouble. The seniors will say, trouble don't set up like rain. And Jabez was saying, God, keep me from trouble. Because he knew that trouble was all around. I want us to note this. In the eyes of John Public, you might be seen as a nobody. But in the eyes of God, you are somebody. Because like I said, no big lot of long talk about Jabez, etc. We know that he came from good stock. We know that. You peruse, peruse it at your ledger. So Jabez was saying, God, I want you to keep me from trouble and pain. I went ahead of myself and give you the fourth. So I'll back up and give you the third. He also said, God, please be with me in all that I do. Let me say to us that Jabez craved the presence of God. Reminding me of Moses, who in chapter 33 and from 12 to 18 even though God had said, I have given the land to you. Moses was saying in there, Moses said, God, this is the situation. If you don't go with me, I am not going from here. Moses wanted the assurance that God, you are going to go with me. Your presence is going to go with me. And scripture says that God honored that God assured him that yes I'm going to go with you I'm saying to us that we cannot get very far unless God's presence is with us so hear me as I, as, as I take you home a few things for us to note firstly the prayer that Jabez prayed was personal Say amen. Because you see, we have been schooled into thinking that you are supposed to pray only for others and not yourselves. But Jabez made it personal. He said, oh, that you would bless me indeed. So there's nothing wrong in going personal with God. God, this is is what I want you to do. Let me tell you something. I don't know how many of you would have testimonies, but I can say to you that every time I would open the cupboard and I would say, God, I don't want you to allow these cupboards to go beer. One day I said to the queen, I said, you know, Every time I open these cupboards, because uh, I didn't tell her, I said, I said to her one morning, you know, every time I open these doors, I said, God, I don't want these cupboards to go beer. And let me say to you, the God that we serve, listen to me, pandemic or no pandemic, coronavirus or no coronavirus, God has provided for us every single day. Oh, that you would bless me indeed, personal. After I've taken care of me, and that's not selfish, I can then say and provide for the others. Because the truth is, if I can't help me, how can I help you? And let me tell you, the God that we serve is so good that we were able to share with others. If you think that that was all, let me tell you something. One day, I had, I don't have a breadfruit tree, but I had breadfruits. And when I was driving in, I said to one neighbor, you want a breadfruit? He said, oh yeah. 
I said to the ne- next neighbor, you want a breadfruit? She said, yes, I love breadfruit. I said, come. And, 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 and you know, do you look? I said, yeah. Yeah. My God has provided all that you would bless me. The prayer that Jabez prayed was power, was, was, like I said, personal. Oh, man. I get excited. But that's all right. The second thing about the prayer of Jabez, my friends, is that this prayer was powerful. You see, you see, it was not a situation where Jabez get up or got up the morning to be grammatically correct. He got up the morning and said, God, it's going to be a lovely day. Jabez said, listen, God, I want you to bless me. And not only do I want you to bless me, but I want you to enlarge my territory. I want you to keep me from harm. I want to be you to be with me. I am saying to us that that's powerful. Could you imagine a man like me and you going to God and saying, God, this is what I want you to do for me. So, the prayer was personal. The prayer was powerful. And I want you to hear this. God, not me, God was pleased with the prayer. The Bible says to us that God granted him success. Now, come on. If God was not pleased, he would not have granted him success. But the scripture says to us that God granted him success. So, let's bring this thing in some some, some sort of perspective. What do you want God to do for you? Listen to me. Everybody talking about jobs hard, people get laid off, or people are laid off, etc. And that's a fact. That's a fact. But let me say to you today, on the 9th of August, in the year of our Lord, 2020, that God is still looking out for his children, God is still answering prayer, God is still answering, hearing prayer. The question is, what do you want God to do for you? We get and skirt around the devil on my back and all kind of drama. What do you want God to do for you, which is personal? God, this is what I want. I tell you. Every, every, every time we pull the cupboard door, boy, God, I got the cupboard door open. Keep these cupboards filled. Because the children ain't going to look at us as they will say we wait about. God honored it. What do you want God to do for you? What is your prayer life like? You see, the, the, the thing about it is, prayer is now a thing of the past. So you're not supposed to pray, but I'm telling you that prayer has worked then, prayer is working now, and prayer will continue to work. My friends, I am saying to us, as we ponder, as we think about our prayer life, as we think about the prayer of Jabez, it provides us with an excellent opportunity to have a conversation and watch him work on our behalf. The Prime Minister said, the Honorable Mia Amor Motley, give me the vote and watch me. Our God is saying, give me your life and see me. 
Give me your life. Give me your life. Because watch this. Watch this. Not a fella could have dealt with all that is happening now. Not one single fella. It has crippled the entire world. But you know what? God is still moving. The church, my friends, is still alive and well. All God is saying, listen to me. I want you to come to me. No wonder the writer to the Hebrews could have said that we are to come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may obtain strength and mercy, etc., in the time of need. My friends, this is no time for us to be playing around. If you follow that prayer closely, you would recognize that Jabez did not use a lot of fancy words. You would recognize that Jabez did not skirt all around the issue. Jabez got straight to the point. That insertion found in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, 9 and 10. So fitting, he got straight to the point. And then what's interesting is the genealogies continue. It's like we pause for a commercial break. And then back to regular programming. I don't know where you're at today. That's the truth. I really don't know. What I do know is that God is present and that God is able to not only hear but to answer your prayer. As we stand together, uh, the worship team did a song on um, a rehearsal. As we stand together, nice, simple, sweet chorus. And yes, we are fully aware of the social distancing, the physical distancing, etc. So I'm not going to ask you to come forward because we are not going to compromise any person's health at all. We will not be found guilty of doing such. But if you are here today and you want God to do something for you that you cannot do yourself because basically that was it, you know. Jabez couldn't bless himself. Jabez could not enlarge his territory. Jabez could not keep himself from pain and, and from causing trouble. His dependence was on God. Which suggests to me that when the writer said Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, that says to me that there was something about his character. If you are here, it's just a two prong. You deal with you and then let God deal with the situation. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. What is your prayer? In every sense of the word that God would do great things for you. As a team, they would sing. 
you can slip your hand up 